In this example, we want the interval of convergence of this pretty wild looking power series. There's factorials all over it. And again, the standard approach to this is to use the ratio test. So I'm gonna look at the limit. We're using a K this time. So the limit is K goes to infinity. Absolute value of the next term divided by the previous term. So A K plus one divided by A K. And when that limit goes to a number less than one, you have a convergent series. And that will give us a condition on X. So we start by writing down the k plus 1 term. So it's going to be a k plus 1 factorial squared x to the k plus 1 divided by 2 times the quantity k plus 1 factorial. Then we're dividing by the kth term. But that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I have 2k factorial over k factorial all squared x to the k. And then we're going to use some pretty standard tricks along the way here. The main thing is just being comfortable splitting terms out of factorial expressions. So k plus 1 factorial up here. That could be written as k plus 1 times k factorial. Just splitting off the first term of the factorial. That's all going to be squared. Just to highlight a cancellation, I'm also going to write x to the k plus 1 as x to the k times x, and then I have this 2k factorial hanging around. In the denominator, I'll make just a little bit of progress on this factorial. That's 2k plus 2 all factorial. And then I have a k factorial squared and an x to the k. Okay, things start to cancel out. I have a k factorial squared in the numerator and the denominator, and I have an x to the k in the numerator and the denominator. So in my numerator, I'm left with a k plus 1 quantity squared times 2k factorial. And then I'm going to split off the first couple terms of the factorial in the denominator, giving me 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1. And after that is just 2k factorial. Whoops, I forgot an x there. All right, the 2k factorials are now going to cancel out. And that x is a constant with respect to this k limit. So I can pull out the absolute value of x as a constant with respect to the k limit anyway. And all those k's are positive numbers, so I'm not worried about absolute value anymore. And in the numerator, I have k plus 1 squared. What I'm going to do is expand that. That's k squared plus 2k plus 1. In the denominator, 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1. Expand that. You get 4k squared plus 6k plus 1. Now I'm going to use the fact that the highest power of k will dominate any sum or difference. In other words, the lower powers only supply negligible corrections. So you can ignore these. If you need to use a more formal method, the strategy would be to divide the top and bottom by k squared and take the limit of all the remaining terms. Either way works fine. And so I end up with a k squared over 4k squared, and the k squareds are going to cancel out, leaving me with a 1 fourth. And so I end up with absolute value of x times 1 fourth. And again, this series is going to converge as long as the result of this ratio test limit is less than 1. That's going to give us the conditions on x for which this converges. So multiply both sides by 4, and you get absolute value of x is less than 4, which means x must be between negative 2 and 2. So our interval of convergence is negative 2 to 2. I could also say the radius of convergence. That's just half the width of the interval. That's 2.